Coming up today on Houston Life, we will meet a local creator who has worked with artists like Beyonce and will explore the new space he has opened to help the Fifth Ward community. And cheers to Wine Club Wednesday poured by HEB. Today we are sipping two refreshing white wines just in time for summer. And get this, one of them is just under $10. Plus, live music is back in Houston. Everclear's frontman shares details on the concert that will reunite his group with other legendary alternative rock bands. And there's a new way to cruise around town this summer where you can jump on a scooter to explore the city. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Danielle Robay in for Courtney Zavala today. And who's this? I'm just meeting him. Are you just meeting Tex for the very first time? He is so cute. He is so great. He's so chill. He was out front when I rolled up to the station a while back, so he's a little exhausted. People oftentimes ask if he ever has any energy, and the answer is yes, he does. He just likes to nap in the afternoon. Well, he can hang out here all hour long. Oh, the... He wants a little wine. wine. <laughs> it is Wine Club Wednesday. Okay, so back on Houston Life Day 2, how are yes. you feeling so far? Really good. You know, we had a shoot earlier this morning uh, that's going to air tomorrow, but we had so much fun. I got to walk around Houston. You showed me some of the important sites. We ate some delicious food. Yeah. So I'm having a great time. And the first time in a pedal boat for both of us. And rolling down a hill. I'll never forget that. We recaptured <laughs> our childhood. And original Neve was on navigation. That was a, a fun little lunch we had there. Yeah, it was delicious. That was some of the best Mexican food I've ever had. It's good, right? Oh, yeah, Nifos really is legendary right there off navigation. Since 1973, after, um, well, Mama Nifa, who has since passed away, she started the restaurant nearly 50 years ago after yeah. her husband John died. It's got a great story and, uh, you know, it's always packed. So. Yeah, well, that's actually why my hair's up today. We were sweaty. That Houston <laughs> heat is real. Okay, so what do you think? Because coming from like the West Coast, right, where there's more of like a desert climate, Houston Houston, because we're so close to the Gulf, only 50 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, right. uh, we have sort of a humid, wet feeling summer. How did you adapt to it? Uh, I don't know if my hair adapted well. I was fine. You know, I kind of think the sunshine is reflected in the people. Everybody is so cheery and welcoming here, and so it's, it makes sense that the weather is the same way. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we had a good time exploring the city today, we but did. Danielle was saying after lunch at Nimfa's that that's the reason why she's going to come back and oh, hang out. Oh, for sure. This food, I need barbecue next. Yeah, well, that's what we're known for. Best barbecue in the world, right? Yeah, tonight. Tonight's the night. Well, from margaritas to white wine, uh, cheers to Wine Club Wednesday. Ooh, we're going to get to this in just a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's inexpensive, under 10 bucks Are for one sipping? of the bottles. Are we We already had a margarita today. This show is about to get wild. <laughs> just took a few <laughs> sips. So uh, we're going to get to that in a bit. Our HEB specialist, Ryan, is over there. She's waiting. Uh, you're going to meet her in just a little while. And we're going to do a little virtual tasting with some of our viewers. So that sounds like a good time, huh? Yeah, really fun. Okay, uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about cable service providers and streaming services. Right. One of the services out there is HBO Max. Mm -hmm. Do you subscribe? I am a subscriber, yes. Okay, Mayor of Easttown with Kate Winslet. Have you watched it yet? No, but I've heard such good things. You gotta check it out. We're yeah. only on the second episode, but it is fantastic. So, Everybody says that. Did you hear about this flub that one of HBO's interns made? So I feel like the internet always wins. I, I woke up, I looked at Twitter today, I saw this and I started laughing so hard. Well, apparently what happened, in case you missed the story, is an email was sent out, and in the subject line, and this was an email from HBO Max, it says, integration test email number one. So that, <laughs> imagine you get that email. A lot of people thought it was a phishing scam or spam. Uh, they were quick to respond in a tweet. They blamed the error on an intern, although I'm not sure that has been confirmed. <laughs> um, but essentially, they were talking about how when you're an intern, it's sort of like a rite of passage that you're going to make mistakes, and sometimes very publicly. Well, here's the thing. I was an intern at a local news station, at a radio station. I was not an intern at a hugely global company like HBO Max. So my errors were very small compared to this intern. That 
What a bummer. Well, and also, we shouldn't just pick on interns, right? Because everyone makes mistakes. Even if you are an employee, a new employee, even veteran employees make mistakes, right? Yeah. I remember, I think it was back during the 2012 election, and Twitter was still kind of new-ish. Yeah. And a lot of corporations learned the lesson that maybe they shouldn't give the social media passwords to the interns because <laughs> there were, like, political tweets coming from very large corporations. Oops. And it got a lot of people fired and in hot water. So. Um, well, nowadays, they pay interns. So back Back when I was an intern, it was strictly for school credit. And I remember I went to school in Madison, Wisconsin, and I got like a very prestigious journalism internship. It was hard to get. And I called my dad. I was so excited. I explained the whole thing to him. And he said, Danielle, are you getting paid? <laughs> and I said, no, it's an internship. This is a really big deal. And he goes, Why are you call doing me it? when you're getting paid. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> oh, wow. So nowadays, I feel like interns have it better than we did. That's true. Yeah. It's true. So you spend a lot of time in airports and on airplanes, oh, and yeah. I've always been a little bit of a germaphobe. And now that <laughs> COVID has, has been here, I feel like now I have an excuse to actually take my little sanitizing wipes and wipe everything down. Yeah, and wear a mask. Nobody thinks you're weird anymore. Oh, yeah. I, well, it's still federal law. You have to wear masks in airports and on planes. But you have a story about germs uh, when you travel or in airports. So a story came out on Huffington Post about the germiest place at the airport. And it's not what we think. It's, it's not the bathroom. It's sort of deceiving. Do you, can you guess what is germier than the bathroom? Well, they usually say that your, your computer space at home or at your office or your phone right. is dirtier than your toilet seat. So I would guess in an airport, maybe it's like the ticket counter or maybe the kiosks that you check in. You're close. It's the security bins. They are dirtier than an airport toilet. How gross is that to think Ugh. about? They also say that the screens on the airplanes are pretty dirty. Uh, there's a lot of research about those handrails and like the sitting area when you put your arms on the seats. I don't know what the answer is to that because it just seems like a germ cesspool at the airport. Well, yeah, because security lines are so stressful anyway that what are you going to do? Wipe down the bin before you put your stuff in it? There's no way to avoid it. You, I think you just lean in and say, I am headed for a day of germs and you take a nice shower afterwards. You do. And yeah. you sanitize as much as you can. I try not to touch a lot of things when I travel. I certainly try not to touch my face, right? But even think about your bag. I mean, you put your bag under the seat in front of you and everyone's stepping all over that space. And so then you take your bag <laughs> to your hotel and you put it on your bed or you get home and you put it on your counter. Speaking like, spoken like a true germaphobe. I have friends who wash off their bags and their luggage before they put it back into the closet. You know, we probably should start doing that at home. Yeah. You know, one of the other things it said is never sit on the floor, which I do all of the time. At the airport? Oh, yeah. Why would you do that? Because those chairs are so bad for your back. I just sit on the floor. I do some work. or, But not anymore. That's, that's a mistake. That's nasty. I mean, I see a lot of people sitting on the airport floor because they've found some stray plug that they can plug their phone into. Right. But it still just seems like an area where shoes and other dirty items, I mean, trash bins are wheeled across those floors. You sit on it? Thank you, Derek. I didn't think about that, okay? I just go to the airport and I do my thing. I don't, I'm don't. i not really mindful, but now I guess I have to be. Do you know what I think is really nasty? When no. you're in the airport and you see someone that has a pillow, I'm probably offending all kinds of people right now. I'm so sorry if you're a pillow carrier. <laughs> in the airport, but people bring their home like bed pillow yeah, and they tie it to their suitcase. What? So their carry-on has this pillow like flopping around on it and then it goes through the security bins oh. and they drag it through the airport and then they put their face in it on the plane. I've never seen that one. Well, now that I've pointed it out to you, you will notice it everywhere. The horror. It everywhere. <laughs> okay, so speaking of flying, I am yeah. not going to the Olympics. Are you going to Tokyo? No. Who's going to Tokyo? Well, That's amazing. Some of our KPRC2 family, <gasps> Keith How Garvin, lucky. Christine Noel, Roseanne Aragon, they will be there uh, along with our fearless photographers. And the countdown is on. We are now officially 30 days out. Oh, there you go. 29 days, 14 hours, 45 minutes. But who's, who's counting? I'm surprised we don't have a seconds column. Do on you this. have any uh, certain events that you love watching? because the Summer Olympics are a big deal. They're a big deal. I always love watching the diving events, mm -hmm. and I love watching gymnastics. Go Simone, we're cheering for you. Uh, those are probably two of my favorite summer sports. What about you? They're incredible. So I love gymnastics too, but I also like some of the more obscure events, uh, like things that nobody's watching. What did I, a trampoline? Oh yeah. And then race walking. Is that like mall walking? 
Race walking? Yeah, were you? Were I had forgotten that that was actually, an, I think that's one of the newer events that they added, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was race walking earlier this morning. I was gonna say, that might be an event for you. That might be, I can probably <laughs> come in last place. You can train at the Galleria and then we'll see you in Tokyo. It sounds good. When we did the show at the Galleria, there were all kinds of race walkers who walked through that mall. There you go. All right, folks, still to come on Houston Life, from long walks, not speed walks, mm -hmm. on the beach to Netflix and chill, we are talking dating apps mm. and the celeb that is saying absolutely not. I'm excited for that. Plus, Lauren Kelly has a really fun way to explore Houston this summer. Hey, Lauren. That's right, you guys. An electric scooter is going to save that wind in your hair and give you a great view of downtown. We're here at Scooter HTX downtown. I got all the details on how you can get on one of these bad boys and take it all around town this entire summer when Houston Life returns. Welcome back to the show. Now, we have a topic we have to dig right into because it's one of my favorites. Okay. Dating. Okay. Online dating specifically. So our girl, Jennifer Aniston, she did an interview with people recently and she said she refuses to do online dating. She does want to find a partner. She thinks it'd be fun to spend her life with somebody, but she just wants to meet someone the old-fashioned way. Okay, well, also... She's one of the biggest celebrities in the world. So I don't know how, if you are Jennifer Aniston, how do you online date? Everyone is going to know who she is. And everyone's going to click yes. Like she would have her pick of the litter. Yeah. Right? Do you remember years ago, years and years ago, like when the internet was just, like the online dating world was just happening, yeah. there was almost this stigma that online dating was like, not okay. Now everybody meets okay. their partner online. Everyone, Brandon and I met on Instagram accidentally. You met your spouse on online? Oh, someone you're dating online. Oh, Jason, wow. I mean, See? I'm going to a wedding next weekend. They met online. Um, but I have this new thing because I am not a big fan of online dating either. It's just not worked out well for me. Okay. So now I, ch I have a thing. I ask men out. I don't wait for them to ask me out. That's good. Yeah, it's How a is that scary. working? It's working well. So I've been turned down, but I've also had guys say yes. So it's, it's good. I don't know. It's good for my ego, right? Who would turn you down? I don't know. So I, it's, I'm not for everybody. Well, let's, uh, online or not, I mean, you, what if you saw some guy online you liked? You wouldn't ask them out online? I would. I, no, I think women go after what they want in their career. Now, why can't we do that in our personal life? I think so, too. Right? I think so, too. All right. Yeah. We're going to put a pin in that because I have a million more questions <laughs> about your online dating world, not oh, no. online dating world. Now, let's bring in Joe Sam, though, who has today's question of the day. Hey, Joe. Hey guys, yeah, so you know online dating was a big thing during the pandemic. Everybody was doing it, but we do have those comments coming in from our Facebook page. We're asking everyone, how would you describe yourself on a dating app? And let's get to those comments right now. Marissa, she writes in, young at heart, slightly older in other places, with a smiling emoji, if you know what she means. Next up we have Sandra, she writes, well, if my grandkids were describing me, they would say like grandma or Moana. Of course, that was a great movie and we all love that. Now, this is my favorite one you guys nick writes cheap self-absorbed lazy slob mother's boy conceited short but great sense of humor and can cook great at video games and drinking beer let me know okay That's my favorite sign one. me up oh. nick <laughs> that's what i said nick is gonna have a whole lot of people coming after him on that online dating app now of course if it was me i would probably write dark chocolate ready to make your heart melt oh Isn't that's that a, a good, good one? one there we go it's I'm a little cheesy in. joe but <laughs> but i think it works i think it works I think it how would cheesy. you describe yourself on a dating app <laughs> oh i don't, probably loves puppies and popsicles but Ooh. Too simple. what about you simple but i'm yeah. a simple guy you got a Desperate? <laughs> oh. We'll take all applicants. <laughs> Look, all are welcome. But you know what? This is absolutely fun. I think a lot of people are going to give more comments on. That's what exactly what we want people to do. We want you to head over to our Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll share your comments a little later on in the show. Danielle and Derek, this is going to be fun. Yeah, this is. I'm excited to see these responses. <laughs> yeah, same. Keep them coming in. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Scooter HTX was founded in October 2020. But after only a couple of months in business, regulations on public scooters were changed due to city requirements. Oh yeah, suddenly they were everywhere around the city, right? So mm -hmm. this small business was able to reopen just a few blocks from Discovery Green, where we hung out this morning, mm -hmm. giving Houstonians the chance to explore the city on a scooter. Lauren Kelly is downtown this afternoon with more. Hey, Lauren. 
You know, it's the hardest thing to be in a room full of electric scooters and not be on them all <laughs> at the same time. This is Elvin. He's one of the co-owners here at Scooter HTX. Like you guys said, we are downtown just a couple of blocks over from Discovery Green. Electric scooters are the way to go. And if you've never been on one, Elvin, why don't you tell everybody why it's such a great family-friendly fun activity? Well, I mean, you get to experience the whole city of downtown and you get to just cruise around, get that wind fresh across your face and then uh, here we have a different variety of scooters um, which I gotta stop you I've seen like one version right but you guys have the largest fleet obviously in the city and you have four different five different ones including the kids the kids scooter over here tell us the difference between what we're seeing here if people come in they want to rent these so these three right here these top at 19 miles an hour and okay. this is our sports scooter obviously it's gonna be more faster but it's more fun okay hold on a second so you guys I don't know I on a whim I bought a scooter for the holidays a couple years ago and Mine goes about 18, that this one goes 19, mm -hmm. but the sports scooter goes how fast? 26. And 26 miles per hour doesn't sound like it's going super fast, but when you are riding that, that's very, very fast, especially when you're on the road, right? Yes, yes. Now we do provide helmets just for a safety issue. Absolutely. Uh, but other than that, I mean, these are for the adults, and then we do have uh, some small scooter for... Some for the kiddos. And those, I did ask, they are electric as well. I'm a little bit too heavy to ride those. But <laughs> if people come in and they want to rent them, are they renting by the hour? Are they renting by the day? How does it work? Yeah, so we do have a 30-minute, we have a 45, and we have an hour option. Okay, okay gotcha. Now, we are working on the uh, day. Uh, like a day pass? Yeah, like a day pass, yeah. We do. Uh, we are going to going to provide a day okay. option for gonna, everyone. You guys are going to work on that. Well, Elvin, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk to your partner here a little bit later on the show. I'm going to get one of these guys out. We're going to go outside downtown and just drive, by, scoot by one of these beautiful murals that were right next to downtown. Danielle and Derek, i got to figure out which scooter I want to get on a little bit later on the show. I'm sending it back to you guys in the studio right now, but I have a feeling it's going to be the fast one. Uh-oh, <laughs> the fast one. Okay, have fun. Be safe out there, Lauren. We'll see you in just a bit. Still to come on Houston Life, if the summer heat has you feeling, I don't know, a bit sticky. Mm. How about some ice cold white wine to help you cool off? Our live wine club tasting is coming up. And after the break, he's the driving force behind alternative rock band Everclear. We're catching up with the Everclear frontman about his life and his return to the stage. Houston Life will be right back. Okay, I feel like all the memories are flooding back now. That was Everclear's 1998 hit, Father of Mine. And if memories of the 90s have come flooding back, the band will be taking Houston fans for a trip down memory lane during the 2021 Summerland Tour concert. Everclear frontman Art Alexakis joins us now with details about this nostalgia tour for alternative rock fans. Art, I have so many questions after seeing that video, but first, you have some Houston ties. We have to talk about your high school days. Yeah, I went to, I, I, by the way, thanks for having me on the show. I've been enjoying the show. Um, yeah, I, I uh, in 1978, 1978, I lived in um, uh, A-Leaf, uh, and uh, I went to A-Leaf Hastings High School for about a year. We and, love and, that. And junior year, yeah. That is yeah. fantastic. Well, Houston's changed a bit, I guess, since you've been here, because that was, you know, a couple decades ago. Let's talk about this tour, though, oh. because the, um, you know, the Summerland tour is really cool. It's a way for not only for fans to reconnect with you, but also coming out of the pandemic, I'm sure it's got to feel good for you to get back out on tour and reconnect with your fans. Absolutely. As you can see the poster there, um, we're on tour with some great bands, Living Color, Hoobastank, Weedus. It's going to be a great tour. Um, yeah. Oh, I, we did pretty good here. Uh, I live with my wife of 17 years and my daughter, who's 13, and she's going through puberty during COVID. That was rough. But, uh, <laughs> I'm I, sure I mean, she loves you announcing going... that on TV, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. she. That's okay. She's not. She doesn't live in Houston. She's not going to say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not totally dumb. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I had a hard time. I, I caught COVID in July and, um, uh, I was in bed for about two months. I was in the hospital for about a week and a half. And, uh, I, I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis about 
five years ago. So that on top of the COVID was rough, but I've been, I got vaccinated, vaccinated in March and I've been just working out, just trying to get ready for tour and get rid of the muscle atrophy from being in bed for two months. And um, we just, we've been playing shows all over the country and people are super excited to be getting back out and everything opening up. So I, I'm really excited about this tour. We want people to come out, be safe, um, and just enjoy some rock and roll. Have a great time. That makes this experience and this tour even more special, I'm sure. Um, what is it like to get back out there and see people sing your lyrics back to them from songs that have withstood the test of time? It's, it's always been something that makes me very humble. You know, I, mean, I remember playing um, Woodstock 99 and singing Santa Monica and having like 300,000 people singing the lyrics back to me. And that was just, I, it's just what, I don't know how to describe it. I still don't after 20 some years. And when they do it now, regardless how many people it is, it's, it always just puts a smile on my face and just joy in my heart that I've connected with so many people. Everclear, Alex, along with Hoobastank and so many of these bands that had these massive hits in the 90s, it seems like you guys are able to sort of strike a chord with so many people. In 1998, Father of Mine, I was a junior in high school, and I feel like any time I hear that song, that hit song on the radio, all these memories come flooding back. So what kind of feedback are you getting from fans? Because this Summerland tour, uh, which is happening at the Arena Theater just down the street from KPRC too, uh, I'm sure that you guys are wildly popular, especially with folks who were in high school in the 90s. Well, yeah, I mean, you're right in the demographic there, right? Um, but it's, um, you'd be amazed at how many young kids, when I say young kids, kids, teenagers, early 20s, millennials, um, uh, Gen Xers, and what were they calling the next one? The, the Gen Z, the, um, you know, that's my daughter. She tells me she's Gen <laughs> Z. Um, and, uh, you know, th there's so many kids that are just hungry for rock, classic rock and roll. And somewhere along the line, we became a classic rock and roll band, which I personally have no problem with. I know a lot of guys from 90s. Uh, guys and gals from 90s and bands are like, I don't want to be defined by the 90s. I go, well, you kind of are. Yeah. That's when that's when you had your success. That's when you made your biggest impact on people. I don't I don't think that people having some form of of just looking back fondly at at, at the you know and, and making those connections. I don't find that a bad thing at all. I don't think I, at all. I think it's important. I think it's healthy. But, you know, we're still a rock band. We still make music. And uh, even though Summerland is shorter sets, that's kind of, if, if you remember Derek back in, uh, I'm trying to think, what was the station in Houston? Was it The Edge? It could have been, yeah. Yeah, okay. So The Edge would have these radio shows where there'd be all these bands, right? 20 bands to play. And each band would get like 20, 30 minutes. Play your, play your hits. That's all you get. Play your hits. Get out of the way for the next round. It's like the, the big hook. Even in L.A. at K-Rock, they had a round stage where when your time was up, it just started rotating and the next band came out and played. It was great. And that's kind of what Summerland, uh, it, it's in its eighth year, by the way. Um, I kind of patterned it after that of doing um, bands coming out, playing their hits, playing their fan favorites, playing maybe a couple new songs. Get out of the way. So it, the the people who win are the fans. You know, on this tour alone, you're going to hear about, I don't know, about 15, 20 hits from all the bands. So well, that's Art, exciting. Alex Akis, thank you so much for your time. We've got the info on the screen right now. This is all happening Thursday, July 8th, 7 p.m. at the Arena Theater. Grab your tickets. They're such a great deal. It's the 2021 Summerland Tour concert started in 2012 by Mr. Alex Akis himself. So thanks so much, Art, and uh, we'll see you at the concert.
Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank Cheers. You. I hope you put your earrings back in for this tour. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I grew with your dad, by the way, Danielle. <laughs> Love it. And to our viewers, if you would like to purchase those tickets, we do have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Just click on the scene on Houston Life section. He looks exactly the same as he did in the 90s, I swear. And just as cool. What just a great as, guy. Even cooler. How about yeah. that? All right, after the break, must have white wines to try this summer starting at just 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Wow. And right now, let's check in with Joe Sam, who has an oversized experience for the whole family. That's right, you guys. Coming up, it's a brand new art house that's open in the Fifth Ward, aiming to help creatives in the community. We'll take a look around that beautiful art house, and we'll get a check of what is coming up for the news at 4, when Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Life, everyone. Derek Shore here, along with Danielle Robey, in for Courtney today. Yeah, we're doing it. Having fun on this Wine Club Wednesday. Definitely. So now, earlier in the show, we asked how you would describe yourself on a dating app. You had a funny one. <laughs> but we have some viewer comments, so I want to see the first one. Maria Crocker says, I better not be describing anything about me on a dating app. The hubs might frown on. <laughs> oh, yes. Husbands can get in the way, for sure. And Jenny writes in, men never read descriptions, so why put them on there? They choose with their eyes on the dating apps. You know what? That is so true. That is funny, Jenny. You're right. Uh, Kat Lee says, goofy, weird, introvert, extrovert, and mean. Love live shows, nature, go-karts, four-wheeling, just a few to say. What does mean? What is, what is mean? Um, I don't know. Maybe mean in, like, the good way? Okay, I hope so. It's potent, but I love go-karting too, Kat, so let's hang out. You seem like you're a lot of fun. Now let's check in with Christine, Lauren, and Justin for a look at what it's is coming like up on It's like mean, but four. make it cute, right? <laughs> I just like the go-karting. That's kind of random. I like that. You know, they have a good point about men not reading those. They're, the descriptions. You know, there's got to be some truth there. to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say I feel like you've got something, Justin. Uh, no, but I put on mine, I'd, I'd basically just say, look, I've been, I've been, you know, with the same lady now for 12 years. I was yeah. married before then. I'd just be, like, housebroken, you know? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's Very low say. standards. Yep. That's good. I'd House be like, we'll do, the, we'll do the dishes and laundry. That covers a lot of ground, though, you know? And I you think know what? so. I mean, that says a lot. Yeah. The laundry, so. the dishes, and housebroken? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's how we roll. Yeah. Now, part yeah. of that is... Part of that is, is just because that girl has the most clothes of any human being I've ever met. And so she can go three months without, I got, I got to, I got to do the I feel like between Danielle, Lauren and I, we could probably give her exactly. a run for a month. You guys know, um, you know? I, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't doubt. Anyway, <laughs> uh, guys, hot out there today. Yeah. Hot. So be yeah. ready. We've got another hot one. In fact, we're looking at uh, temperatures that are all sitting generally in the low to mid nineties. Touch cooler than that as you get towards Galveston. They're at 88. South winds kicked in too. So one of the reasons that we're going to continue to see not only these mid nineties for the next couple of days, high pressure sliding back in, but of course, yeah, look at that. Feels like temperatures once again are anywhere from about 100 to 107. So we're getting real close to that threshold. 108 is a threshold for a heat advisory. I wouldn't be shocked to see one tomorrow, by the way. And here's the other big story, is that the stormy weather we've had the last couple of days and nights that have just been really pounding out there. Not much today. Weak sea breeze sliding its way up over uh, Lake Livingston there, up around Glendale, and that's it. And I don't think we'll see a whole lot this afternoon. And in fact, Futurecast doesn't really paint too much for us. We'll start off tomorrow morning relatively quiet and clear the upper 70s, and then we'll get eh, a few showers and downpours as we head into the afternoon as that sea breeze starts to become a little more active, but only about 20-30% max. And lock that in for the rest of the week as well. We're going to keep that summer sizzle around, so if you're headed on out there this evening. Here's the other thing, too. It's a lot of folks are trying to get, you know, that evening run. You can still get dehydrated, ladies, as well. So just make sure that you're taking care of you as you're out there uh, over the next couple of days, because uh, that summer sizzle is going to be back. Yeah, without a doubt. All right, Justin, thank you. All right, look now at some of those stories we're covering for you this afternoon. He is the second person charged in connection with five-year-old Samuel Olson's death. What we're learning about Benjamin Rivera and what role prosecutors say he played in connection with the case. Also, President Biden speaking to the nation a short time ago to address the growing issue of violent crime. We know people in Houston have seen the spike here as our homicide rate has increased by more than 40 percent from a year ago. What the president wants to do to provide more resources to cities dealing with crime spikes. Plus, Houston City Council passes a measure that will increase the amount of money you pay for your water bill. We'll break down how much more it's going to cost you. So a lot coming up today at 4 o'clock, you guys. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Thanks.
We'll see you then. And it is happy hour in Studio B. In today's wine club poured by HEB, we're highlighting two refreshing white wines just in time for the summer heat. Oh, and humidity. It is hot out there right now. We will have our HEB wine specialist join us a little later to walk us through the tasting. But first, we are introducing you to wine club members and mother and daughter duo Katie and Carol Gallian zooming in from the River Oaks area. Welcome to you both. Hi. Hi. It is great to see you. Okay, we got to ask about the dog in the background. What's your dog's I name? I know. <laughs> she's snoozing. Well, she's absolutely adorable. So let's learn a bit about uh, about you. I understand your dog's name is Lucy. Carol, mom, yes. you were born in Texas, but you have lived all over the place, Alaska and London? Yes. My father was in the oil business. We moved 17 times. I went to five different high schools. So uh, it was probably a bit challenging at that age to do such things, but now it's really been something that served me well later in life because I adapt easily, so. Wow, I guess so, 17 high schools, my goodness. Oh, wow. 17 very, moves. <laughs> yeah, I hope you were prom queen at one of them, but I heard you in <laughs> Texas no, Longhorn. Baseball cheerleader. There we go. <laughs> Even cooler. I heard you're a Texas Longhorn also. Yes, yes we both are. We both are. Mm -hmm. Hook them. <laughs> Yes. Very it's kind cool. of a family legacy with grandparents. She went there. I went there. I didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> okay. That is very cool. Didn't have much of a choice. I understand the family pressure. Katie, so you're 25 years old, and I understand you're a COVID ICU nurse at Houston oh, wow. Methodist. So you've had quite a year and a half. Yes. It's definitely been a challenging year, but we work with a great team. Um, I guess over the past few months, though, things have definitely been improving. Um, we have the vaccine to thank for that, but we've kept our spirits high and we definitely uh, have had to power through quite a bit. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, for so many of us, we were lucky that we were just staying home, right? But for folks like yourselves, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on the front lines, you can't turn it off. So thank you so much for all your work in the community. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, I, I have a lot of people to thank for being my support system, too. It sounds like you could use some wine also. <laughs> I know. Oh. I, can, I can't say that that hasn't helped me get through some hard chips. <laughs> okay. Well, it's almost 5 o'clock. It's 3.38. So how about this, Carol and Katie? Stay right there because after the break, our wine specialist will walk us through a tasting of a couple white wines. These are perfect for summer sipping. Wow. I'm so glad I came here on a Wednesday. Perfect. Houston Life. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Houston Live. Now, we've been hanging out with Carol and Katie, members of our wine club poured by HEB. And their dog, Lucy, who's so adorable, here to share her top picks on which cool white wines to reach for this summer. HEB wine specialist, Ryan Robinson. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here in the studio with you guys. Well, we love uh, that you were at the Meyerland location, so look for Ryan when you're down there. And you, along with the other specialists, if customers are in the stores and they have questions about what to buy, they can tell you what they like in their budget and you'll steer them in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. And you know what's great is we can do uh, samples again at the at the stores that are equipped to do samples. So, I mean, that's great. Come up to us, uh, try some wines, and we'll be able to pick out the perfect wine for you. Well, speaking of trying, we have a little tasting going on yes. today, right? Absolutely. So, uh, I don't know if y'all noticed, but it's hot outside. No, <laughs> so, no. Um, I hadn't noticed at all. What are you talking about? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so, these are some really great summer whites that are going to do the job, cool you right off. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we're going to start with uh, Torontas. Uh, this is a wine from Argentina. Uh, this is a really special grape. A lot of people, if you think about Argentina, what kind of wine do you think about? Malbec? Oh, ding, ding, ding. Good job. Wine? Absolutely, yes. Very but good. Toronto's is actually a really special grape because it is native to Argentina. So it is one of the only grapes in the whole Western Hemisphere that we drink that is native to, uh, most of them come from, you know, the European. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, and that's this one right here. I'm going to turn the label so our camera can see it. So the full name is Finca El Origen Torantes, right? Torantes. Yes. Uh, this price is a showstopper. Ryan, 
Yeah, you can get some phenomenal value on mm. South American wines, uh, Chilean wines, Argentinian wines. It's right around like under $10 a bottle. $9. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It has a delicious hint of peach. It's very fruity. Oh, yeah. You picked that out. That's really good. Yeah, peach. And then it's so it kind of smells a little sweet, but it drinks dry. Um, so you get white peach and then lovely like Meyer lemon on the uh, flavor. It also tastes expensive. Oh. That's <laughs> cheers to it that. It really does. <laughs> it kind of does, right? Okay, Carol and Katie, I can see that you were trying the wine along with us. What do you think? It's really light. I like it a lot, and you definitely can't beat that price. Good weeknight wine. I, I, it's so true. A Refreshing. Weeknight, yeah, a weeknight wine, right? So you pick up a case, and then you just have it on standby. We don't drink really expensive bottles at home if it's just the two of us. Oh, yeah, like a Tuesday night wine. A Tuesday. Yeah. Today's Wednesday. It works for Wednesdays as well. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay, let's move on to this next one. This is something called the Domaine de la Perrier. 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 Yes. Okay. I like when you pronounce them. <laughs> um, so this is a Sancerre. Um, I'm calling it right now, 2021, Summer of Sancerre. I'm on record. Mm. It's it's happening. Um, so a Sancerre is a Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire region of France. You know, don't let French wines intimidate you. Um, whereas we in, you know, the U.S., we think about wines as like, are they Sauvignon Blanc? Are they Cabernet? In France, they just say where they're from. So all you have to do is you have to find a region that you like those wines and just go for those. Okay. Oh, interesting. Are we all tasting? That makes it simple. Yeah, I already tasted mine. Cheers, Cheers to you. This one is a little pricier, right? What is the price on this one? 32 it bucks? It is. Yeah, yeah. Sancerre's are going to run you a little bit more, but there's a reason for that. The complexity on here is really beautiful. I want you to take a sip and think about like a shortbread cookie with like lemon curd on top and then a little bit of smoked sea salt, maybe oh, like a touch it. of thyme. Like all of those things Sounds are going so on good. in this wine. <laughs> that sounds delicious. What does this mean too? HVE3 certified. So these vineyards for this particular label, they're HVE3 e3 certified um yes yeah, so just that they're going through all of the processes of being you know organic and um uh sustainable uh, so you can be happy to buy that wine okay very important yeah i want to know what our wine club members think me too I really like it. Exactly. You described my very favorite dessert of all time, anything that has lemon curd. I mean, how much better can you get? So this is perfect. It's, it's very sophisticated. It seems like it has a little bit of effervescence to it. Mm. Ooh. There you go. Well, I think next time I'm going to bring the shortbread cookies. How does that sound? Uh. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Carol and Katie Galleon, thanks so much for joining us today. And give uh, Lucy some belly rubs for us. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. 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 Ryan. Thank you so much. Thank this you. was really fun. Cheers. And to our viewers, if you would like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, what are you waiting for? Just visit our website to register. You will have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of the virtual tastings like the one we just had. And as a reminder, of course, you can find today's featured wines at your local HEB. Cheers. 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 <laughs> All right. And from working with artists like Beyond and Trey Songs to helping local creatives in the Fifth Ward. Isaac Yeoman is on a mission to impact the community. He sure is. Joe Sam is joining us now with a look at the project that aims to make a positive change. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, after working with Marvel, Sony, Tracy McGrady, and so many others, Isaac Yeoman, better known as Chill Vibes in the music industry, and a multi-platinum Grammy-nominated creative, showed me around a new space that you can see here called The Art House, and it's ready for local creatives. This space was built for creatives by creatives. And it's not lacking in luxury either. Isaac Yeoman plans on offering this space up to creatives in the Fifth Ward community to bang out some amazing content for their brands. Fifth Ward has so much rich art history, right? So um, my family grew up in Fifth Ward. Um, I got baptized at my church in Fifth Ward at Pleasant Grove. <laughs> And it was a lot of sentimental reasons why I wanted to come here as well. So, yeah, man, we just wanted to do something and make it feel special for the community. Each level is designed for developing concepts and can be changed depending on the type of setting requested by the artist. We have three different spaces where you can create. We have our insert stage. Um, our insert stage is full. We have two custom sets 
Um, and those will be interchanging as time passes. So people that have visited before and already shot on some, you know, they may come back in a few months and get a whole different look, whole different vibe. The house will also include photographer backdrops, a makeup and dressing room, and even a creator's lounge to draft up more top quality ideas. In our creator's lounge, uh, you definitely get a beautiful, uh, unique view of the downtown skyline. Um, I, everybody that has come and visited is like, man, I've never seen the skyline from this perspective. And it's like almost picture perfect. What's also picture perfect is the response he's received from the community that he grew up in, showcasing how giving back can really make a positive difference. One of the key factors of coming to Fifth Ward was that we wanted to be impactful, right? Um, we're a young, minority-owned and operated company, and we wanted to make sure that we served the underserved. Um, and so we knew that Fifth Ward uh, was a space and a place that was so close to the city, but lacked certain resources. And with so much, like I said, rich art history in this community, we wanted to bring that vibe back, right? Be the new young creatives that's coming and helping to open the doors for other creators. Yeah, beautiful space there. Now, Ayo Visuals just recently celebrated 10 years in the film and music industry and hopes to help others break barriers within it as well. To find out more about the art house, I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, first of all, anytime someone is working with somebody like Beyonce and Trey Songs, you have to go and check them out. <laughs> For sure. Beautiful it's also place. a beautiful space, the proximity of Fifth Ward to downtown. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it is so fantastic that this is happening in that community, and I'm sure it's going to change a lot of lives. Absolutely. It sure will. All right, Joe. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right, why don't we check back in with Lauren Kelly, Danielle. She has been hanging out downtown, showing us a fun way the whole family can cruise around the city. Hey, Lauren. Absolutely, guys. Look at this. There's murals all over. We've been cruising with the scooters, and we're going to show you exactly how you can get on one. The entire family can have a blast this summer when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Don't move. super hot days this summer in Houston is to get on the scooter and let the wind blow in your hair. And I'm here with the guys of Scooter HTX, which is located downtown, by the way. This is Luis, and we're talking all about how you and the fam can get on one of these this summer. It's super simple, and you have a scooter for everyone, right? Oh, of course, of course. We got a different variety. I don't know if you can see him. We got I, I want to point colors. out that Elvin is on the fast one that I want to get on eventually. That one goes like 26 miles an hour. Hey. For the professional drivers here, right? Well, the professional drivers, just remember, you guys have to bring a driver's license okay. just to make sure you guys, we, we're sure you guys can control okay, that. Okay, so here's my question. Somebody comes, they rent a scooter, they're like, how do I use this thing? It's all electric, you've got a brake here, you've got the accelerator here, and it's all about really just holding on and balancing. Do you want to just, we can watch Elvin as he as he rides by, it's, you're keeping both feet on, you're keeping both both hands on, right? Of course, of course. you got to keep both feet on and both hands on the, the vehicle at all times. Just remember that while well, these are in motion, it balances by itself. So all you have to do is just stand on and enjoy the views. Okay, cool. And I know that you have a helmet for everybody because it's always great to be safe. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to, to race you down here. We go ahead. Let's go. Things go. All let's right, go. ready? Here we go. On your count. And, and I do own one, so that's why I'm a little better than you guys probably think I am. But here <laughs> we go. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Give it a little. Give it a little kick right there. Whoa! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Turning is going to be the end of me. But here we go. Oh, Ready? oh go. this is so Houston of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Alvin, thank you so much. Luis, thank you so much for the info. These are so much fun, you guys. It's a great way to keep the kids and yourself entertained throughout the summer. They've got a fun discount for HL viewers, which I'm going to put on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Danielle and Derek, I'm sending it back to you guys in the studio. i got some more laps to do right here. You're making mm. that look like so mm. much fun, and you are a pro, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Laura, be safe. Wear that helmet. All right, after the break, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show, including a former America's Got Talent contestant who is singing with pride. Mm, and we'll be right back with more Houston Light.
And tomorrow on Houston Life, we're going on another adventure with not your average Joe on a sky-high ride with Texas biplanes. Learn how you can fly with their summer family flights. Oh, that sounds fun. Plus, the one and only Christina Wells is performing live in studio. She will be sharing the inspiration behind her latest single and details on her upcoming show. You know, she performed last week at Minute Maid Park for Pride Night at the Astros game. And people Ooh. cannot get enough Christina Wells. And you know what? It has been, it's probably been a year and a half since she has performed live in studio because we haven't had any live musical guests because of COVID. Now, I have been hearing about Christina Wells since I got here. People at the station love her, so I can't wait for that. People love her, and she has such a huge following. America loves her. Even Tex loves her, even though he's, Aww. you know, he's still a little bit exhausted. Shh. I don't know if I believe he has energy. We'll see tomorrow. He does. He, you'll see him running around in just a minute. <laughs> Danielle Robe, it is great to see you. Fun hanging out. Let's do it again tomorrow. Do it again tomorrow. Thanks, Derek. All right. That does it for Houston Life. Christine and Lauren, we'll send it over to you. Great to see you guys. Yeah, Tex is a full vibe right now. <laughs> Look at him. Yes. A whole mood. Resting. Yeah, he is a whole mood. Yeah, right. very good. All right.